Greetings. What we've got here is an Xbox, not a 360, not an Xbox One. Well, it is an Xbox One. It's the original Xbox One. The original Xbox. And the reason I've got this out here is because going back, way back in February 2005, Microsoft issued a recall and replacement power cable program for these because, as you would infer, uh, there was an issue with the power cables and it was a fire risk. Now, what the actual issue was, if I take a look in here at the power supply, is not the cable, but the connector. I shall just remove this power supply. And the issue, you see on this one where the connector is actually riveted down to the board, so it's got a nice secure connection. And there are the solder joints. Now the issue on some power supplies was that these rivets weren't here. Instead you had connections similar to, to this one, albeit without the switch contacts on the back. And you can see there are no mounting, uh, mounting studs to mount down on the, on the circuit board. It's got the front ones, but of course on the Xbox itself there are no front mounting screws. So all the stress of plugging the cable in and out on this plug, on this socket, sorry, would stress the connections because all the strain would be on the solder joints. And over time, these would start breaking, these would start arcing, and in rare instances, these would actually catch fire. That's why when Microsoft did the recall, if you had a power supply, if they knew your machine, based on the serial number, was like to have a power supply like this one, you'd be issued a replacement cable like that, which in fact was virtually identical to the one that they told you, stop using it, throw it away. If, on the other hand, you had one of the supplies where these studs were missing, what you ended up with was one of these instead, which is something I'd never even seen before in the UK. This is an arc fault interrupter. It's not just a ground fault interrupter, not an, RC, not an RCD, it's an arc fault interrupter. So what these do, instead of uh, just operating as a, an earth leakage breaker, so if you touch something you get uh, instead instead of getting a serious shock, it trips the power. These detect arcing conditions. So if the, the lead starts to crackle, like that, it trips out. So like I said, we, I've never seen these in the UK uh, before or since that uh, big recall. So uh, I was wondering, since I've actually got, I've got a couple of these, What's inside? What's inside an arc fault interrupter? Well, let's find out. Here's one I've already taken the screws out of, and the screws are actually, they appear to be pentalobe screws. So long before Apple started uh, annoying people by putting these on the MacBooks, the manufacturers of these were, doing, were using them to keep people out as well. So with those four screws out, the lid just lifts off and we've got what at first glance appears to be quite a complex circuit. In fact it's on two separate boards so if I just pop this out of here. And see, so we've got this daughter board here and a main board here. 
and also a small 12 volt transformer and it looks like all the the brains of the outfit really there's a lot going on on this circuit and not much on there so I think this is the brains and this is the brawn so as I said it looks quite complex so I thought let's draw it out here's the circuit on the right is that complex looking little small board on the top and on the left is the big board and the first thing you'll notice on the big board is the chip on it the KA2803B and that's interesting because that's actually an earth fault detector which tells me that it's not just an arc fault interrupter it is a ground fault interrupter as well it's an RCD here's the one I haven't opened hooked up to my RCD tester let's see what we get there we go and in fact if I try to do that with 30 milliamp trip test it clicks out too quickly so it's definitely an RCD and not just an arc fault interrupter so you can see that the first part of this circuit is actually an RCD or a ground fault interrupter if the if that IC detects an earth leak it's through the current transformer basically because it's um, it's detected an imbalance normally live and neutral currents are the same and they'll cancel out if there's a difference this detects it and trips out and what happens is that, that actually trips out that thyristor the SCR over towards the left and that basically shorts out that chips own power supply which at first I was thinking that's that's weird that's strange I don't see why how it worked that way but if you look at the supply to that circuit which comes from the bridge rectifier that circuit actually comes through the trip coil so if that SCR closes and shorts out the power supply for the chip all the current all of a sudden instead of being just enough to keep the circuit working the full load will go straight to that trip coil pulling in the coil and releasing the breaker and while we're on this side of the circuit as well you can see down below there's a proper there's an actual relay down here which if that relay is energized it switches a these three resistors at the bottom it'll switch those through in fact there are, there are a couple of turns of wire around one of the current transformers and what that means is that if that relay which is in fact that relay there trips all of a sudden you'll get power flowing you get this live wire coming through you got power flowing back through several times around through there and then back so it's deliberately creating an imbalance there and that's how the test circuits work on these things you basically create a deliberate imbalance and let the circuit make sure that the circuit actually detects it and trips and on this that's done with a relay and we'll come to that in a moment because normally that would just be you could just use a test button to trigger that but on this that small circuit at the top is the one that's got control of that relay in fact this is the one which has got there's a test button right near the one of the main chips on here which is in fact is a PIC 12F675 you can see we've got a, a test button here and if that 12F675 energizes pin 5 that switches T6 which all of a sudden grounds one side of that relay closes the relay imbalances the circuit upsets the earth leakage detector and pops the breaker the other stuff over here is just as you get onto the board you can see we've got a regulator circuit we've got 15 volts coming in that just gets dropped down to the correct voltage to run the op amp and the pick and then we've got uh, the trip wire which goes back down to the relay we've got ground at the top we've got a, a voltage sense connection which is just picking up just uh, an unsmoothed rectified uh, supply straight off the, off the mains so that's effectively sampling the AC waveform so the pick can see what's going on if the pick decides it wants to see what's going on one of its outputs you can see is connecting to a pair of transistors 
and one of them switches another transistor. So if this one is low, the transistor above is turned off and the supply coming back in on pin 7 of the pick is practically down to zero because it's 7.5k off the ground connection and in fact 800k off the mains. It's got two 200k resistors here plus the other two further up. If that output on pin 2 is turned up on the other hand that will turn on T4 which turns on T5 which all of a sudden bypasses two of those 200k resistors and brings up that voltage much higher up. So the, the pick has got a higher volt. It's actually watching the voltage. It's now monitoring the mains, the mains waveform. At least that's what it looks like to me anyway. So that's the voltage sense connection. We've also got uh, a current sense connection, which comes from the other current transformer. So one end is, is connected down to ground and the other end comes along. And in fact, that goes into the LM358 which inverts it and passes it straight on pick six, pin 6 of the pick. And we've got this other connection, the last connection we've got then is an opto connection. And this is also driven from pin 2 and if T4 and T5 are turned on, that gets pulled down and switches on this opto isolator. In fact, it's um, this is actually an opto triac. And when that is on, it appears to pass AC through another coil in that current transformer. There are two CTs on this board and this one actually has four connections on it. So one of the windings all of a sudden gets AC through it. I have no idea why, whether it affects the way it's picking up the signal, I don't know. In fact it's bound to affect the way that it's picking up the signal, but uh, I don't design arc fault interrupters do I? Coming back to the pick, we've got pin 4 which is for the test button. If we ground that, it trips the breaker. And we've got pin 3 then which drives the red and green LEDs. If it's low the green LED is lit, if it's high the red LED is lit. And that is how you make an arc fault interrupter. And that is also how you get fooled into thinking you've got a faulty mains cable when in fact you've got a faulty power supply. Hope you find that interesting. As I said before, I've never come across these before and I think I've come across them say, uh, again really. They seem to be very popular over in the States but over, over in the UK we just don't get them. We don't seem to need them. All of our mains cabling in the houses is all copper. We don't have any, you know, any cheap aluminium cabling, so uh, we don't really uh, have a problem with um, loose arcing connections in the UK. Thanks for watching. See you soon.